internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hours of Crypto. Let's get right into today's episode. All right, so right off the bat, the 100 push-ups has been done. It's on Twitter. I'm not going to put it into YouTube videos because there's music in it. But if you guys want to check it out, the link is in the description down below for my Twitter. But here we go again. Vanek, the big dogs of the financial world, are calling for a $3 million Bitcoin by 2050. We have a model that assumes that by 2050, this is very long term, that Bitcoin becomes a reserve asset that's used in global trade and held by global central banks at a very modest 2% weight. And in that model, we arrive at a $3 million price target for Bitcoin. Now, that sounds you know, extreme, but that's a 16% compound annual growth rate for a couple decades. You know, that, that's not really that extreme. So into the millions over the medium term is a high conviction. Yep, you heard that right. But can we talk about something real quick? How are these guys so comfortable getting on TV and shilling a coin where we don't even know who the issuer is? Satoshi, whoever that is, or the group, holds over 1 million Bitcoin. Meanwhile, XRP holders, people like us, get called delusional when we say $100 XRP is coming. And, you know, $100 XRP is for certain. The daily volume for XRP being utilized is just a trillion dollars. And I know some of you guys may have heard peanut when I said a trillion dollars for a daily volume. You guys are the true legends. You know who you are. But, I mean, those numbers, when you're going to an ecosystem where utility tokens are going to be leveraged heavily to free up friction, I mean... Words can I describe this? It's not even a question, you know, of if it will happen. It will happen without a doubt. But that's not even what we're here to talk about today. People love to bash Ripple's escrow, calling it a scam, claiming it's centralized or saying it's a problem. But let's get real for a second. And this is very, very important. And these are all facts, okay? If it's such a scam, why is Ripple transparent about it, right? <laughs> Boom. Why make something so open if there's something shady going on? Boom. The fact is people don't understand the importance of the escrow from an institutional and governmental perspective. Hear me out, okay? The fact that Ripple has escrow in place is actually great for financial stability and predictability and many other reasons. I'm not going to go too in depth. And trust me, there's a reason why it was escrowed in the first place. Since day one, I've said this in the past, Ripple had their eye on the prize. They knew there were targeting institutions, so they set themselves up perfectly, you know? It, like, they knew exactly how to, important this would be for banks, government organizations. And you think big players like that would want to work with something unpredictable? Absolutely not. That's where the firms are going to go. And we've seen with, with events already that that's just not a good outcome. And then we have committed to assessing the implementation by the end of 2025, the assess, assessment of the implementation of our recommendation by the end of 2025. So we're going to let people put things in place and then we're going to take some action. And I'll stop there. But our work, uh, crypto assets, like Martin said, has been taking up a lot of time and mental energy in terms of thinking about what the next step should be. If I can just start with a a big picture sort of framework, which I think you're hearing from each of us. I just want to sort of maybe put it into my own words, which is I think there's three things that we probably are all trying to do. You've heard a lot about us trying to agree on minimum standards that can be applied globally. And that's a lot of what you've heard is us working on that. And Martin was just alluding to the second one, which is once we have those in place, we have to work to ensure that those are implemented consistently around the world. You can't have pockets where it's not implemented. That just It just doesn't work at that point. And then the third piece is, I think you heard it a few times already, is this is an area that's just changing rapidly. Martin referred to three different phases. Uh, Neil referred to some changes and how hard it is to categorize things. We have to have a framework in place that ensures that we're going to cooperate 
coordinate and share information because once we put these standards in place, we can't just sit back and go, ah, it's done. We have to be talking to each other all the time. So that's the sort of big picture of what we've been working on. And that's why you see Ripple working with everyone right now. They understood the assignment. I mean, I rest my case at that point. It's, in, it's indisputable facts. The escrow isn't a scam. It's a, a strategic strategy. It's designed to give comfort to the very institutions that will drive the revolution. Only the people who don't get it are out here calling it a problem. We're just stating facts, right? And that is why you see Ripple just deeply working with everybody. Nobody's on Ripple's level. And that is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. And let's get real for a second. And this needs to be discussed. Just like we talked about, you know, unrealized gains. That's what they're calling for in the coming years because there's going to be so much wealth created here. The crypto ecosystem is going to face a collapse of a big Big asset at some point. Think 2008 financial crisis, but for crypto. This is not a question of if. This is 100% going to happen. It's indisputable. And guess what? Bitcoin is the best candidate for that collapse. Think about it. Why are we so bullish on an asset where we don't even know the creator? Doesn't that seem a little crazy to you? Whoever or whatever they are has been sitting on over a million Bitcoin and people are still pushing this narrative like it's the future. Makes zero sense to me. And guess what? I hold Bitcoin. I'm, I'm, we'll make money off Bitcoin in the near future. But when I talk about when the market is going to take a hit, a big asset will take a hit. We are going to relive that. It has to happen. It's just how markets work, right? But you saw the smaller ones happen, right? Like the baby ones like FTX and BitConnect. And as we go and get bigger, and bigger, we need a big boom. That's just how it is. We got to be visionaries here, folks. We got to be the smart ones in the room. So XRP is transparent, it's efficient, it's scalable, and it's carbon neutral. It checks every box for what the future of the financial system needs. Bitcoin, it's a ticking none of the boxes. You understand that? Like, yet somehow it's still being hailed as, you know, the savior of finance. Like, are we really serious right now? And it blows my it blows my mind even more given my background in the financial ecosystem that they're actually going with this, you know? I and you see how none of them, none of them ever will talk about XRP. Ever. Ever. Like it doesn't even come out of their mouth. And you think Ripple is doing all these meetings and acquiring all these companies for what? Just to ditch XRP? No, it's just so monumental. I know it sounds crazy, folks. I know you heard me say this so many times, but patience is something so valuable that money cannot buy. And it's you as a human being that needs to control it and understand it. And like truly, like the ones that don't give a shit about the price, like we are so fine. We are just following this journey and it's remarkable. You know, Vanek today, this morning, $3 million Bitcoin. They're just like, come on. 2050, that guy's probably not even going to be alive by then. Jesus. Anyhow, I'm going to play this video here, okay? So, but before I get into that, this is pretty legendary. So it's from 2016, Chris Larson. And I just want to take a minute and talk about how humans as a whole are really dumb sometimes. And listen, I'm included in that. We all are. But the smart ones, the crazy ones, that's us. That's you. I know some of you get it, and that's why we're here together. You know, we got 10,000 base views usually every every time. And you know what? That's fine by me. I don't care. I don't do it for the views. I do it for this community and this journey because I know we're going to win at the end. And the ones that are here right now, you know, we we are the ones who see the future while the rest of the world is asleep. And what we're about to witness, 99% of people can't even comprehend. They just can't wrap their heads around it. But you and me, we're not normal. We're smart crazy in a way. We know where this is all heading. The writing is on the wall, people. And I'm gonna play this Chris Larson video from 2016. He sounds very crazy. How does what you're doing fit into the fourth industrial revolution? Yeah, it was a very exciting time. Uh, so much change going on. And one of those additional changes that I think will be part of this 
fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. is this notion that we now have this internet of value. We now have new technologies. I'll go, you know, uh, with um, the, uh, uh, the term that people have coined, right, the internet of value. Whether you call them blockchain mm -hmm. or distributed ledgers or whatever we call them, bottom line is this is the beginning of an internet of value. Or whatever we call them, bottom line is this is the beginning of an internet of value where value will be able to move like information, where it will move instantly. And then kind of looking forward, I think you, you really see this uh, you know, almost futuristic world where, you know, here at Davos, they're talking mm -hmm. about Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. Well, now layer on this Internet of Things, these billions of cars, devices being connected. Now suddenly they are also uh, commerce connected. Mm -hmm. So things are buying, selling, mm -hmm. keeping money. Uh, you can imagine the self-driving car mm -hmm. that's paying a, an ambitious coder in Kenya mm -hmm. to upgrade its self-driving you know, systems. It's paying some embedded device in the road here in Davos mm -hmm. to use the road. And it's collecting money from consumers or maybe even other things that might want to hitch a ride in that self-driving car. Mm -hmm. So suddenly now you could argue that billions and billions of new economic participants have arrived on Earth. Mm -hmm. Look at Chris Larson, right? I mean, he sounds so crazy, doesn't he? But look at where we are now. Whirlpool has done everything they said they would and more. What sounded wild back then has become the foundation for a revolution. This is why XRP is going to be massive. It's already checks off, you know, every box that matters for the future of finance. And Bitcoin, well, it's still sitting there trying to figure out what it's supposed to do. They, so they throw it into an ETF. It's incredible, you know, how far we've come. The groundwork Ripple has laid out is staggering. The partnerships, the utility, the regulation, it's all lining up. This is history in the making, and we're living through it. So here's my message for you today. Don't get distracted by all the noise, whether it's Vanek or Bitcoin shills or doubters calling us delusional. You know, just stay focused. You're here because you know what's coming. XRP is solving the problem that actually matters. Scalability, utility, carbon neutrality, predictability. We're standing on the edge of the biggest financial revolution of our time. And remember this, the smart ones, the crazy ones, we're the ones who change the world. And in XRP, it's going to be the number one asset on core market cap. Don't doubt it for a second, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that. Remember that the crazy ones, the dumb ones, like whatever you want to call them, delusional, tinfoil hats, you know, our time is coming. You know, you gotta understand that. You know, just to understand that Bitcoin went from pennies to $74,000 and a lot of people make money off that. And same with Ethereum, 30 cents, to $4,500. There's no question if that XRP is not gonna moon. You know, it's not, I don't even, I don't, I, I never worry about, I know, I'm done. So with that being said, push-ups, link in the description down below on Twitter, and we will be back with another video.
We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.